Okay, hi, I'm Marlene Freeman. I'm an associate professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School and the director of clinical services at the perinatal psychiatry program at Massachusetts General Hospital. And I just wanted to touch base on anxiety disorders across pregnancy and the postpartum. So it's very, very common for women of reproductive age to have anxiety disorders. About a third of women will have an anxiety disorder during their lifetime. And um, it's very common for women to require treatment during pregnancy or the postpartum. It's also common for women to have onset of new anxiety disorders during pregnancy and especially the postpartum. So I wanted to, to specifically talk a little bit about panic disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder during the perinatal period. So women, uh, in terms of the course of the disorders during pregnancy, uh, it appears that women do not appear in general to be protected against the experience of anxiety disorders during pregnancy. And the course for most women is similar during pregnancy as not during pregnancy. The big difference is, is that women generally want to minimize medication exposure and many will discontinue medications for pregnancy and that's when the risk of relapse is very high. So many women will either try and conceive or find out they're pregnant, stop medication, and then have an acute relapse of their anxiety disorder. Uh, because these disorders are so chronic and recurrent, many women are faced with treatment decisions during pregnancy. Many women do want to stop medications during pregnancy, and in general, clinically, what we would recommend is to maximize the non-clinical treatments. And in the case of anxiety disorder, that's really psychotherapy. Specifically, we recommend a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy in our program for women who are approaching pregnancy or pregnant because it's, it's such a great fit during pregnancy. It's really oriented on symptom management, and it also is very empowering. Women learn how to cope better uh, with their anxiety symptoms, and it's something that they can use really lifelong. And it's such an optimal time to do it during pregnancy when she's really focused on minimizing medications. We also know that the postpartum is a time of increased anxiety for many women, and if women can master some cognitive behavioral therapy during pregnancy, they can have those skills to help them out during the postpartum. So pre uh, panic disorder is, a, is very commonly experienced during pregnancy. Uh, if women stop medication and they, that they were on before, they are, as said before, very common to experience relapse. And some of the somatic symptoms of pregnancy can actually contribute to the experience of panic attacks. So, for example, in the first trimester, when women have a lot of GI symptoms like nausea, that can sometimes have a bi-directional relationship with anxiety, where the somatic symptoms can trigger more panic attacks, and then the anxiety about all the symptoms kind of fuels more anxiety. So it's very common for women to experience that in the first trimester, and later in pregnancy, due to body changes, many women will experience, for example, some difficulty breathing, uh, may, may feel a little more constricted in their breathing, and for some women, that's actually a big trigger for panic attacks. Attacks. We also worry a lot um, about untreated panic disorder in general. We know that the physiologic changes of the stress response are risk factors for pregnancy. We would consider untreated panic dis disorder an exposure during pregnancy similarly as we would consider medication or other exposures to be concerns during pregnancy. Now, in terms of risks of untreated psychiatric disorders and specifically anxiety disorders during pregnancy, you know, we worry a lot about uh, women not taking care of themselves, not being well during pregnancy because that's the biggest risk factor of postpartum illness. Also, the most commonly cited complications from untreated panic disorder and other anxiety disorders um, is prematurity and babies being uh, small for gestational age. Um, sometimes it's hard to separate out what might be a, a risk for a medication versus the risks of the untreated illness. For many women, though, the untreated illness is extremely serious and does warrant treatment. So while, while we really focus on the non-treatment, non, excuse me, non-medication treatment strategies like psychotherapy, many women will need treatment with medication during the course of their pregnancies. I also wanted to touch on obsessive compulsive disorder as well in course during pregnancy. The course is similar uh, to panic disorder in that most women will probably experience a similar course. 
during pregnancy. Some women may feel better or worse, but most will, will experience about the same course. Now, the, what's especially concerning about OCD is that there is an increased risk during the postpartum. And there, it's very, very common for women in the context of postpartum depression to have obsessive compulsive symptoms. Now, this can often take shape around obsessive thoughts about hurting the baby. This is very, very common, very alarming to patients, and can be very alarming to healthcare providers as well. It's important for those who work with postpartum women on the front lines to really know the difference between postpartum obsessions and postpartum psychosis. So in terms of postpartum obsessions, women are having recurrent, intrusive, distressing thoughts that generally don't make any sense to them and are really inconsistent with, with their personalities. You know, Generally, women experience these as shocking and very shameful, uh, maybe reluctant to tell other people about them. But they have great insight into the fact that they're distressing thoughts. Whereas with a postpartum psychosis, part of the experience of being psychotic is that women do not have good insight. So they may have... Uh, they may have thoughts that are bizarre, thoughts about harming the baby, which is an extremely uh, emergent situation, but they generally do not have good insight. So postpartum psychosis is an emergency. There's great risk of harm to the baby, to the mother, uh, maybe other children in the household. But postpartum OCD is not in the same category. Um, it, uh, it, it's, it's treatable. Um, it's important to reassure women who have postpartum obsessions that it's a common experience. And if there's a comorbid depression, uh, to also reassure women that that's also a common experience. And they're usually treated together, uh, at the, uh, typically using uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors uh, for both the treatment of postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression, which generally resolve together. So it, it, it's very important that we reassure women who are struggling with these, these issues that they're not alone, that they're actually in very good company. These are common experiences and very treatable.